In a world where you're flooded with thousands of different exercises that you should try and you should do, you may be surprised to know that an Olympian trained with no other strength training than just 72 seconds of training twice a week leading up to the Olympics. Now, before we can get into what that workout is, we need to lay the groundwork here. There are three primary types of training that I wanna to cover today. Traditional strength training, plyometric training, and isometric training. Traditional strength training involves lifting weights through full range of motion. This is by far the most popular type of training and has been popularized by bodybuilders and powerlifters for decades. This type of training dominates the fitness industry and it's probably what you're gonna see if you go into any type of commercial gym. Another form of training though that has gained popularity is plyometric training. Plyometric training involves rapid stretching and shortening actions to improve jump height, rate of force development, and sprint speed. But there's another form of training that's been around for thousands of years and you may not know much about it. Isometric training involves static muscle contractions without joint movement. This type of training has a long history in martial arts. It also gained popularity in Russia in the late 1800s. In the mid 1900s, as Russia dominated the Olympics, this type of training spread to the United States through someone called Bob Hoffman, the owner of York Barbell. It is with this type of training that we get our first introduction to the 60 second workout. Bob Hoffman popularized the Big Five isometric workout, which was just five exercises held for 12 seconds as strong of a muscle contraction as possible. These included the overhead press, bench press, deadlift, squat, and pull up. At the time, this was actually a really popular type of training and athletes who were training for the Olympics as well as bodybuilders at the time were beginning to implement this type of isometric training. These five movements were all done inside a rack with a fixed barbell pushing as hard as possible in these five different positions. This type of training further gained popularity when Bruce Lee expanded on these five exercises to include eight exercises done for 12 seconds each. The eight exercises that Bruce Lee did included the overhead press near a lockout position, the shoulder press from a start, calf raise, a pull from a clean position, a parallel squat, a shoulder shrug, a dead weight lift, and a quarter squat. Again, all done in the barbell rack, all with a barbell in a fixed position and contracting the muscles as hard as possible. Okay, so now that we know the history of isometric training, what do we actually need to know about it and how it can be used effectively today? Because there's actually a new wave of research coming out on the benefits of isometric training and a whole new wave of athletes using really short duration, high intensity isometric training to improve sports performance. Just a few weeks ago, I attended a strength conditioning conference with a really energetic and passionate strength coach named Alex Natera. He presented his work on isometrics and specifically introduced the idea of the 72 second Olympian workout. This training session built on all of the history of isometric training, as well as our modern understanding of joint biomechanics and running mechanics. Specifically, this maximum isometric workout involved three sets of three repetitions of four seconds each of what's called a knee iso push or a single leg knee isometric contracting the quadricep and pushing into the bar as hard as possible. This is a protocol that the runner followed twice a week with no other strength training. So just twice a week, they would do 72 seconds of total work with fairly short rest between each repetition and between sets. The total workout lasted less than 20 minutes, including a warm up and the results were incredible. He shared how this very high neuromuscular stimulus and very low training volume was able to produce a 30 to 40% increase in maximum force output. Also, a reduction in ground contact time during running, as well as improvements in stride length and stride frequency. And then most important of all, this improved running economy or the efficiency of this athlete's running at race pace. Overall, this 72 second Olympian training session really opened my eyes to the possibilities of isometric training. By building strength really efficiently in a joint angle specific position to running, this athlete was able to get better results than they were from doing a bunch of traditional strength exercises in far less time. Now you're probably wondering, this is pretty interesting, but it's just one individual. How does this actually affect you and how should you be implementing isometric training? I think that you should choose one of these three methods that best matches your individual goals. Number one is ballistic isometrics. Number two is max force isometrics. And then number three is long duration isometrics. 
ballistic isometrics are the very fastest and shortest isometric training. This involves half a second to two seconds of muscle contractions done as fast as possible. This is a really good type of training for sprinters and athletes who wanna move as fast as possible because it specifically trains the rate of force development to help you sprint faster and jump higher. This would involve setting a static bar position and then very rapidly pushing as hard as possible for a very short duration. If you're implementing these, the total volume of training is gonna be very low, less than 60 seconds total. So you may pick two or three different exercises and do one to two second contractions for five to 10 sets. For example, maybe you're doing the knee iso push or the hip iso push exercise and you're doing three sets of five repetitions two seconds hold each. The next type of isometrics that you can consider, and I think this is the most applicable for most athletes, for team sport athletes, and even for distance runners and things like that, and that is maximum force isometrics. This is the 72 second Olympian workout that we just shared. Three sets of three repetitions for four seconds each. When you hold a maximum contraction isometric, you can hold maximum about 10 seconds before you see force output start to drop. The specific reason for choosing around three to four seconds for max force isometrics is that it's generally beneficial to target about 30 to 40% of that maximum so that way you can keep creating that maximum power repetition after repetition. If you hold that full 10 second isometric, the very first repetition, then that's probably going to be the only effective repetition that you do. That's why if we think back to the original Bruce Lee workout, for example, they were only doing one set. So the modern day protocol for getting the most out of maximum force isometrics is using those three to four second holds for about three sets of three repetitions. This will improve your max force output. It can have carryover to improving your one repetition on big lifts like your bench press and your squat. And like we said before, it can also improve your running economy and running mechanics. And then the last type of isometrics that I think you should consider are long duration isometrics. Long duration isometrics involve holding a muscle contraction for around 20 to 45 seconds. To be able to hold a muscle contraction for this long, you can't hold 100%. So often we're targeting around 70 to 80% of our maximum force output, but held for that longer duration. This is specifically beneficial for tendon remodeling. And I've actually made a bunch of videos before about the protocol that I like for this, which is 30 seconds on, 90 seconds rest, three times. This is a really great protocol for athletes who are experiencing patellar tendon pain or Achilles tendon pain and want to deliver a lot of load to start to remodel that tendon but not inflame it or irritate it. So although it's not as popular as traditional resistance training, isometric training has a ton of potential for improving force outputs, running economy, and jump height. I think the people who are gonna get the most out of isometric training are actually those who have never done it before. This is often where we see athletes see the greatest benefit is those who have done traditional strength training for years who have maybe hit a plateau and they need a new stimulus. Some common ways to introduce isometric training into your routine would be to do some 60 to 90 second isometric training protocol on every other day. For example, if you're doing traditional training on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you could do isometrics on Tuesday and Thursday. Because isometrics don't involve that eccentric or lengthening muscle contraction, they generally don't cause nearly as much fatigue as we get from traditional strength training. Some athletes, like Olympic runners who are handling a ton of training volume, may benefit from switching entirely from traditional strength training to isometric training, at least for some period of time. But remember, you don't have to entirely replace your program to make this effective. Another method to integrate isometrics into your current training would be to replace a few sets of your traditional strength training with isometrics. So for example, instead of doing four sets of bench press, you may do two sets of bench press with your traditional training and two sets of max force isometrics. I hope this video opened your eyes to some of the opportunities with isometric training, and I'm curious which one you're gonna try, ballistic, max force, or long duration holds. Let me know in the comments below. I'll also link to some of the isometric research that I've been reading in the description below, as well as Alex and Tara's isometric course that I'm taking, which is really great. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.